skipping out of the coaching corner because we're absolutely delighted to say we've just been joined in our studio by Bjorn Borg, who has come straight up from the Royal Box, fresh from seeing Novak Djokovic, who in straight sets has equaled your record, Bjorn, of 51 Wimbledon match wins. What was that like to watch him make his way through to another final? Well, first of all, to be back at uh, Wimbledon is a special thing. Uh, for me, it's a special thing because I had a lot of, a lot of success here. Uh, I think Wimbledon is... For me and many other players, the, 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 the greatest tournament you can win. And to see the first semifinals, Djokovic, Gasquet, it's, it's, it's great. They play great tennis. And to see Novak plays, uh, even if I think he's not playing his best tennis right now, I think he has to improve to the final on Sunday to, to win the, the, the championship. But to see the, these guys play, it's uh, unbelievable. And... Uh, I cannot complain in my seat either. I see the tennis pretty good. <laughs> you have a pretty good seat. Did you feel in that first set that um, maybe Gasquet, Richard Gasquet was trying to play like Stanislav Wawrinka did in the French Open, taking the backhand down the line and hitting harder? Novak seemed like he was a little passive. He, uh, I thought Novak was a little bit passive, but I think he, he, it looked like he was a little tight too in, in right. his game. Especially on the backhand side, because right. usually that's his strength. He, he can do anything with the backhand side. But uh, in one strange way, he, he won the match. Uh, but like I said, he needs to improve his game. And if Gasquet win the first set, I think it will be a completely different match. Right. Uh, but still, uh, still Gasquet. Uh, Gasquet uh, we saw he got a little bit tired in the end, though. I think mm. that was the match against Fabrinka that, uh, that, you know, that long, long five-setter match. But uh, it's going to be a very interesting final. The next match is going to be very interesting. Well, five Wimbledon titles. You're always so welcomed when you come back here. You just touched on it. It's a place with such special memories for you. How and when do you choose to come back? And do you, which day do you choose? Is men's <laughs> semi-finals always one of the best ones for you? And what's your most favorite thing about coming back to Wimbledon? What do you enjoy the best? No, my, my most famous uh, memory was first time when I played in the, in, in the main draw many years ago. <laughs> I don't want to say the, the year. Yeah, let's keep the year out. We'll keep sure? the year out. I was hardly born. <laughs> yeah. But that was my best memory because my, really? yeah, because my dreams, I had two dreams to play Davis Cup and uh, to play in the main draw in Wimbledon. And, uh, you know, when that came through in Wimbledon many years ago, and uh, I did well and I said, this is probably going to be one of my favorite tournaments. And it became one of my favorite tournaments. But when I decide, to come to Wimbledon is like, uh, it's, you know, I want to come every year, but you know, I have a wife, so I cannot decide all the time where I want to go. So uh, I'm just joking. So this year she gave you special permission. <laughs> I'm joking. But uh, we've been here many times and uh, we will keep coming back because it's, it's a great event and people are nice and Wimbledon is Wimbledon. I have to ask, I mean, was that when you lost to Roger Taylor? Was that yes, the first, that yeah. was the first time? Yeah. So then you win the first time, you beat Ili, Ili Nastase. What, what, I mean, did you really think you can win Wimbledon with your game on grass in those days? I think in those days, uh, the grass was faster than, than today. Right. Uh, it was a faster game. Uh, everybody said that I could not win because I was a clay court player and maybe I had a chance to win Paris or the clay court tournaments. Right. But to come to Wimbledon is a special thing. And, you know, to handle the grass and you have to serve in volley, Many people said you have to do these kind of things, but I think I was maybe one of the few players that changed a little bit. You don't have to come to the net all the time. You can stay back. Right. So I, I played more kind of my game, and uh, but still it was difficult in the beginning. It, mm. it, before you got used to the grass, you got used to to play your own game on the grass. But I finally made that, and uh, and playing in 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 my first Wimbledon final. I was like uh, not expect to win. I mean, he was the favorite to win, right. but uh, you know, uh, he had the pressure. I played my game and I, I did really well. But then the years to come, the first year, everybody said that it was a very dry summer because there was like 35, 40 degrees. So the weather was dry, the ball was, you know, bouncing high and that was a big advantage for me. Right. And next year, uh, 77, when I won my second Wimbledon, it was raining every single day, so the ball was bouncing like this low, 
And they said, oh, he could even win when the ball was bouncing low. And after the second time, I don't think they said too yeah. many things after. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you feel? Because I know I would think when you play the French Open, some years you think, OK, I'm going to win. I think I'm going to win. And now after two years of winning Wimbledon, did you have that same feeling? Because in Sweden, watching on TV, we had that feeling. We thought, OK, no, 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 no. He's going to win for sure. If you survive the first week, he's going to win. Did you have that confidence? I had the confidence, you know, coming to to uh, to Wimbledon after, after Paris, uh, practicing on the grass, get used to the whole thing, starting Wimbledon on that Monday. Uh, I was saying to myself, if I could survive maybe the first two rounds, I'd be in good shape. Right. Not the first week, the right. first two rounds. Okay. Wow. Then I felt comfortable. <laughs> Well, you won five years in a row here at Wimbledon, didn't you? And one of the most special memories must be that epic final in 1980 against your old rival, John McEnroe. We've got the footage here now that we can just reflect on. We look back at this all the time, Bjorn. What is it like when you look back on these scenes? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, it's true. I don't remember anything of this. <laughs> really? No, I'm just joking. But uh, this was a very special moment and probably the biggest match I ever played. And... Uh, the most, one of the most classic match too in in in, in, in the history and in, in Wimbledon history too. So, I think for both uh, me and John, the, this was something special, and it started a, a, a very nice relationship with me and John too. So we, we, we become very good friends. But I think this m match m meant a lot to John, and it meant a lot to, to me. And especially playing this kind of match, it's uh, mentally it was very very tough because. You know, you're winning, you're losing, and then up you're winning the match. So, of course, this was the match of my life. You came through in five sets against a man that you played 14 times in your career, winning seven each. Yeah, but, you know, the, everybody talking about the rivalry, but too bad we only played seven, uh, 14 matches. And, uh, you know, those 14 matches was 14 great matches. And, unfortunately, we didn't play more. But if I had continued to play, I thought we... We probably have played many, many more good matches. Well, we're going to see two rivals coming on court next up as we see you taking the Wimbledon trophy there in 1980, your fifth and final Wimbledon title. And of course, it's Andy Murray or Roger Federer who will now be playing Novak Djokovic in the final. Here's a pairing who are 12 11 in their career head to heads. Roger just won ahead. I know you've got to get back onto centre court quickly so you don't miss the first point there. What's your take ahead of that match? Who do you expect to see come through? I think it's going to be a very tough match. I, I, I pick, it's, uh, I guess, five sets, but I think for Murray, it's important to serve well. Uh, not to be too defensive. I mean, if he has the chances, he has to go for it. Uh, if if Roger has been playing really well, I think those two players are the, the two players who's been playing the best tennis so far at Wimbledon. Mm. If if uh, I know that Roger is going to attack, he's going to be very aggressive uh, against Murray, and he's playing really well. But it's going to be interesting, though. I think it's going to be a, a, a good match for everybody. I have to ask, boy, can you imagine Roger Federer, 33 years old, and being that focused on playing his best tennis? Because I can't, because I stopped, but you stopped early, mm -hmm. too. I mean, what, what, what I cannot. It I agree with you, Max. I cannot either, but, you know, 34, uh, still have the motivation, still go out and, and, and work really hard, and he wants to win tournaments, wants to win more Grand Slam tournaments. Uh, I think uh, he's going to play one more year. I think uh, next year he wants to, to win, uh, try to go for the Olympics in Rio. Right. Uh, and then after next year, I think he, he will step away from the game. Mm. You do? You think so? Okay. Yeah, well. So I'm intrigued. I hope not. You <laughs> hope not, of no, course. No, we hope not, because then he's going to join you and me in the, on, the, on the Champions Tour. And that's not fair. Yeah, that's not us. fair. Well, <laughs> that's exactly what I wanted to ask. Now, we see we were just talking about McEnroe. We know he's very involved in the TV world now, commentating on the tennis. What do you spend most of your time doing now? Uh, most of the time spending with the family. Uh, one of them, our, our youngest kids, Leo, is playing a lot of tennis. He's 12 years old. And then uh, I'm involved with the Beyond Board clothing and sports line, so I'm doing a lot of things with that. And we've seen a couple of junior Swedish players here th th this year's Wimbledon. Mikael Yuma. Yeah. Yes. Mikael Yuma. Yeah. Well, yeah, we have two, two brothers. Uh, Mikael, who's going to play in the final in the juniors, uh, who's going to be very interesting. 
not only that, but you see a lot of Scandinavian juniors was was playing really good tennis. But yeah. Michael, it's 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 interest uh, player, and then uh, Elias. I think you know if he continue, yeah, I think he has a great future. But as we know, everybody, it's the competition is tough. It's a long way to go. Yeah. You know that. I know that. I know. That. I think we can. I think the player uh, ball boys are coming out on the court. But I have to ask you a question that no one's ever asked you before. What kind of tennis parent are you? Oh, yeah, because I've heard, you know. I, <laughs> I must say I'm one of the nicer, good ones. I'm not, I'm, I'm not the one who's crazy completely. But then your son plays with Jonas Björkman's son sometimes, yes, yes, Max some, Björkman. Yes. And I've heard that, isn't there a little bit of confrontation there, maybe? Uh, I think you, you know that the parents are the, some parents could be completely crazy, but uh, I think the play is like Björkman or myself or other parents who has been played tennis themselves. I think they stay on their side and they are a little bit nice and loose compared to other parents, but parents could be crazy in tennis and that's why they destroy so many of their own kids. Yeah. And just before we let you Couldn't go, agree more. I have to ask you, with all the different playing styles, how much the game has changed, particularly on grass over the, the last few years, the last few decades, would you like to play in today's game? Would you like to take on one of these guys when you're at your prime? I think we, uh, if I started to play tennis, I think we had to had we, we, we need to adapt to the tennis how it plays today. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we play, when I played or Matt played, it was a different kind of tennis. Today is a powerful game. The, the guys are taller, they hit the ball harder. But if, if you want to play today, of course, you have to adapt to the tennis how it has been played today. Mm -hmm. And if I were like 15 uh, and I had a heart for tennis, of course, I would do that. Mm -hmm. OK, who's going to win? Oh. Andrew Murray and Roger uh, Federer. <laughs> I say Federer in five it? sets. Okay. Well, listen, I'm we'll let you get back. I know you, you've Thank got to you. head back Thanks. over to the Royal Box. Enjoy the match. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank to be you. With us. Appreciate Your it. Thank An you. absolute delight. Thank, Thank you. you.